Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I, Dr. J.C. Mohan, will provide you a cardiologist viewpoint about diabetes management beyond glycemic control. Type 2 diabetes is not only an impaired insulin production defect and glucose intolerance, but also a complex inherited syndrome of cardiovascular risk factors. Diabetes continues to cast a long and sinister shadow over the cardiovascular health of mankind, and we treat it too late and too conservatively in a step care approach, and this reliance ravages cardiovascular system. Diabetes provides both a substrate and trigger for cardiovascular disease, and not only diabetes presents an accelerated cardiovascular disease, but also in presence of diabetes, conventional risk factors are more deadly. However, it is not diabetes alone, but any level of dysglycemia that is related to the cardiorenal risk. So, Diabetes is an arbitrary point in the course of dysglycemia, but there is a continuum between dysglycemia and cardiorenal risk. So, both diabetes and atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease are the epidemic of these centuries, both coexist and are equally prevalent in the community. Worldwide meta-analysis of 57 studies have shown that of the patients whom we see in our clinic, one third have definite cardiovascular disease, of which 90% the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, and 15% 15 present with heart failure. Even in India, of all the patients whom we see in our clinic in regular practice, 37% patients have established cardiovascular disease. What is the impact of cardiovascular, what is the impact of diabetes on cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular deaths? The data from atherosclerosis research in communities suggests that over a 12 years follow-up, mortality, both sudden cardiac death and non-sudden cardiac death, is nearly four times more in diabetics compared to non-diabetics. Younger individuals with diabetes have higher incidence of cardiovascular disease, stroke, and mortality compared to non-diabetics. Data also suggests that those who develop diabetes before the age of 50 years, their all-cause mortality is nearly seven and a half times more compared to non-diabetics, and their sudden cardiac death is 4.6 times more. 70% of all Mortality in a diabetic is cardiovascular, unlike a non-diabetic individual where 30% of the mortality is cardiovascular and rest is non-cardiovascular. Amongst cardiovascular deaths in diabetics, 50% death is because of atherothrombosis, another 50% because of non-ischemic heart failure. So, majority of patients with diabetes will develop cardiovascular disease before they die and half of the patient cardiovascular disease will develop heart failure before they die, and majority of diabetic cardiovascular disease will develop diabetic kidney disease of some extent. There is a bidirectional relationship between diabetes and heart, diabetes and the kidney, and the underlying pathophysiology is as a result of oxidative stress, inflammation, cellular apoptosis, and vasculopathy. It is also well known that there are common agents which actually protect the kidney and the heart from the ravages of diabetes, and these are SGL2 inhibitors, GLP-1 receptor analogs, drugs like phenarinone, arnine, ACE inhibitors, and angiotensin receptor blockers. Regular switching under physiological conditions occurs in normal individuals in heart tissue with regard to the substrate of metabolism, that is glucose versus free fatty acids. When postprandially it is the glucose which is used, most of the other time 
It is the free fatty acid, which is the substrate or fuel for the heart. This switch becomes defective in diabetes because of GLUT4 relative inactivity, resulting in heart being greatly dependent on free fatty acid, which requires a lot of oxygen for the metabolism of free fatty acid, resulting in a kind of hypoxia. So there are multiple defects in ion channels and enzymes in diabetes. There is a renal natiuretic handicap, altered myocardial energetics, and myocardial fibrosis. These are the ways in which cardiovascular disease gets started in individuals with diabetes. Data from the Mayo Clinic suggests that free living diabetic individuals Two thirds of these individuals have something wrong with their left ventricle. Actually, the left ventricle normal only in 34%. Majority of these patients have concentric left ventricle hypertrophy, eccentric left ventricle hypertrophy, or concentric remodeling. And we also have to remember that this is left ventricle hypertrophy is a substrate for heart failure, sudden cardiac death, and other types of cardiovascular disease. So hypertrophic hearts fail and fibrillate. This is exactly what happens in diabetes. So we have more often heart failure. We have more often sudden cardiac death. One of the important things we have to remember is this natiuretic handicap, which is common in diabetics, causes sodium poisoning of cardiomyocytes. And this reduced natiuretic in obese type 2 diabetes is as a result of overexpression of SGL2 natiuretic peptide degradation by adipocytes and leptin resisting natiuresis. So how prevalent, is, how prevalent is diabetes in patients with coronary artery disease? This is data from Clarify registry showing that in Europe, 20% of all patients with coronary artery disease have diabetes. In India, 40% of all patients with coronary artery disease have diabetes. And in Gulf countries, 60% of all patients with coronary artery disease have diabetes as a risk factor. We know from the national adult cohort data from the United States that there is a linear relationship between HbA1c and cardiovascular mortality as well as all-cause mortality. However, we have focused for a long time on the strategies to reduce HbA1c, improve the glycemic control, thinking that this would reduce the cardiovascular events. However, the meta-analysis of four randomized st studies have shown us that intensive glycemic control compared to standard glycemic control does not affect cardiovascular death, all-cause mortality or stroke, although there is a small but significant decrease in incident myocardial infarction. Even there is no legacy effect as far as intensive control of diabetes is concerned, as is obvious from 10 and 15 years follow up of VADT patients with regard to cardiovascular death. Clearly indicating that bad metabolic karma cannot be reversed by intensive glucose control even on a long term follow up. So obviously, Glucose control is not the big issue for heart. We, of course, know that as far as anti-diabetic drugs are concerned, we need them to have some degree of cardiovascular protection. So not only they should have glycemic control, they should have off-target effects so that cardiovascular system and renal system can be protected. However, Till 2015, what we were doing probably was controlling glycemia, but we weren't doing anything with regard to cardiovascular protection and renal protection along with anti-diabetic drugs, although we were using other drugs which were cardioprotective agents. We learned from these four big randomized trials that whether you use insulin or screatogogues, the all-cause mortality actually is lowest when the HbA1c is between 7 and 9 percent. Obviously, although there is a linear relationship between all-cause mortality and HbA1c, 
but when you reduce HbA1c, that reverse occur, and mostly between seven and nine percent HbA1c, the curve is flat. This kind of information has been further strengthened by this recent data, which came from Japan in individuals who have undergone coronary angioplasty and have diabetes. Ten years follow-up suggests that between 6.5 and 8.5 percent HbA1c, there is no increased incidence of new cardiovascular events. As far as HbA1c at baseline of less than 7 percent or more than 7 percent is concerned, cumulative incidence of cardiovascular deaths remains same over 10 years. However, we know from STANO2 study that intensive treatment of diabetes, cholesterol, and blood pressure results in 50% reduction in cardiovascular death compared to conventional treatment. And hence, we know that we can do a lot in patients who have diabetes with or without cardiovascular disease. As I said, standard two study has clearly shown us that a lot can be achieved by intensive control of ABC, A standing for HbA1c, B for blood pressure, and C for cholesterol. However, we also learned from standard two that two third of the benefit comes because of LDL lowering, and a great benefit comes from blood pressure lowering, and there is a small benefit as a result of better glycemic control. So we learned from STANO2 trial that there is a dominant role of BP and LDL reduction for cardioprotection in diabetic individuals on a long-term basis, but there is some role of glycemic control, more so in newly diagnosed diabetes patients, as was suggested in UK PDS study. So what is the holistic way of managing diabetes? Well, we need to have, of course, glycemic control, but beyond glycemic control, we need to target other dominant components like blood pressure, LDL, and of course, therapy directed to cardiorenal protection, which includes the new anti-diabetic drugs like SGL2 inhibitors and GLP-1 receptor analogs, not to undermine the benefits of therapeutic lifestyle intervention in the form of cessation of smoking, weight reduction, exercise, and diet. So the anti-diabetic anti drugs, as I said, provide us glycemic control, but they also have off-target effects. These off-target effects can be bonus or can be penalty. For example, drugs like glitazones were shown to have some kind of penalty in the form of increased chances of heart failure. We also saw this kind of uh, effect with some DPP-4 inhibitors like sexagliptin to some extent, and alloglyptin to a smaller extent. From 2015 onwards, we started adding value to metabolic management by new cardiometabolic agents, which not only helped in better control of dysglycemia, but also cardiorenal protection. So diabetes and cardiovascular event protection, we of course now have newer drugs which have potential benefits of optimal glycemic control and have, which have independent and variable effects of certain anti-dysglycemic agents. So the putative cardiovascular protection occurs with these agents as a result of mitigation of glucotoxicity, which of course is not of that great magnitude as much as resetting adipose clock and ameliorating sodium mishandling by the cells to provide sustainable benefits. The, there are other benefits which occur with newer agents. For example, it has been shown that hyperkalemia gets neutralized to a significant extent by SGL2 inhibitors. And we know that hyperkalemia promotes arrhythmias, worse outcome, and prevents uptitration of cardioprotective agents. So when you look at these new two class of agents, GLP-1 receptor analogs and SGL2 inhibitors, with regard to cardiovascular protection, for three-point MACE, they have equal benefit. For cardiovascular death reduction, these are equal benefit. However, SGL2 inhibitors 
provide greater reduction of hospital for heart failure and incident heart failure and also they provide greater benefit with regard to the kidney outcome so we have better broadband anti diabetic molecules available now these provide a definite trajectory of benefits however these are not equal either and all are unique and incomparable as you are you and i am i which actually compels us to use as many of these cardio protective agents in a given patient as is feasible possible and affordable so we need to actually now free ourselves from the dogmatic constraints of concept of diabetes and we need to understand that if diabetes is equal to cardiovascular disease we need to treat it with drugs which would provide not only glycemic control but cardiovascular and renal protection as well thank you very much